This is our low-cost 3D printer. And what it does is it takes in ABS filament, it's a strong plastic, it's a thermoplastic, it's what Legos are made of, and it extrudes it through this little nozzle down here, which is heated to about 210 degrees Celsius. And what it does is it basically draws out each layer of the object, and each layer fuses the layer beneath it. And so what happens is you slowly, layer by layer, you build up an object. And after you've done all your layers, you're you're done. It's cool, you can pick it up, and you can start using it. It's ABS, so it's strong. Like, this is a a replacement player for a foosball table because we somebody dropped a foosball table off at our offices and so like okay sure and uh, but it was missing some parts and so we printed a new one and it's it's strong I mean this thing can be used right away so while 3d printing is usually thought of as a prototyping technology we also want to see it as a personal manufacturing technology uh, if you have this in your home you're missing a bracket you can print out a new bracket uh, there are people who have printed out bath plugs for their baths so they can take a bath because they lost their old bath plug uh, this one guy actually broke the knob on his um, on his stove, and so he and measured the parts, parts of the existing knob, and then he printed out a new one. And then he uploaded the design, so next time someone breaks a knob on their stove, they can just you know go to Thingiverse, download the design for the knob, and print out their own. We actually handle STL files, which just about every 3D program in the world can generate. Uh, we also do whistles, by the way. Um, yeah, but you can build usable parts very easily. Uh, so yeah, I'm Blender will do 3D, uh, STL files, um, you know, SolidWorks, SketchUp, just about anything you can think of. This has to be extremely expensive. It's not, amazingly not. This is the cheapest 3D printer in the world. It's $950. It comes as a kit. That's the catch. You have to put it together yourself. But it's incredibly cheap. The material, the ABS, we sell at 10 bucks a pound, which is also very inexpensive. The kit comes with six pounds. And um, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, this whole machine costs less than the material for some other machines. So, it's a steal. It's the future. Okay, so the XY positioning is about a tenth of a millimeter. The layer height that we recommend is about a third of a millimeter. You can tweak that a little bit. The real limiting factor in that respect is the width of the bead of ABS that comes out of the nozzle, and that's about half a millimeter. So that's the minimum wall width you can do. You can't do anything thinner than that, but, or at least not with this nozzle. You have to sort of rebuild the extruder. So lots of people are experimenting with the extruder right now. Um, people are making different versions. We actually have a, a different tool head called a frost extruder that's meant for using uh, viscous materials that are not that are uh, viscous at room temperature, and that uses air pressure. And we've extruded peanut butter with that, we extruded frosting, clay. We actually uh, did a project for Yahoo Hack Day. We were printing out headlines on toast in uh, frosting. So you could you know, have your delicious headline in the morning. <clears throat> and if it was bad news, you'd be like, oh no, that's terrible. Just, ah, nah, nah, nah. Eat it really quickly, and then you don't have to think about it again all day. You've internalized the data. So, yeah, plenty of uses. And uh, people, the great thing about Thingiverse is, is you know, it's, a, it's a sharing site, so you can see what people are doing. And uh, this is very much like the early PC revolution. We have no idea what people are going to end up doing with this stuff. You know, you can't go back to Wozniak and, t and try to explain BitTorrent right now. I mean, you can explain it to him now, but you can't go back in time because there's no such thing as time travel. But if there was such a thing as time travel, you'd just confuse Steve Wozniak. So don't confuse Steve Wozniak. That's, that's what I'm saying. He's a nice guy, from what I hear. And that's it. That's MakerBot. This is, what we, this is our flagship product. We do some other things, too.